Euler's Identity Proof, a Curtis McLeod and Reese Harms production. Euler's Identity links mathematical constants e, i, and pi together in a way that equals negative 1. It is defined by e to the i pi equals negative 1. Not so often can something so complex be proved so simplistically. This proof relies on the McLaren series, which states that any function can be expressed as the sum of the series of its derivatives as a function of 0 over progressing factorials where each of the terms is multiplied by increasing powers of x. The first term, f0. The second term, the first derivative of x0 multiplied by x. The third term, the second derivative of f0 multiplied by x squared over the second factorial, and so on to infinity. This is the McLaren series. The first step in proving Euler's identity is to apply the McLaren series to the function e to the x. A knowledge of basic indice laws tells us that when x equals 0, the function e to the x equals 1. The derivative of the function e to the x is, as we all know, e to the x, and hence, the derivative of the function at x equals 0 is also equal to 1. This is true for any ordered derivative. Therefore, Using the expansion of the McLaren series, the following is true. As you can see, the expansion is now 1 plus x plus x squared on the second factorial plus x cubed on the third factorial, and so on, with increasing powers of x and progressing factorials all the way to infinity. Now let's look at a McLaren series expansion around e to the ix, where the new function is defined as f ix equals e to the ix. Considering the expansion shown for ex, we can sub ix directly in for x throughout the new expansion. The series then be defined as 1 plus ix plus xi all squared over the second factorial plus xi cubed over the third factorial and so on to infinity. We must now stop momentarily and revisit imaginary numbers. We know that i is defined as the square root of negative 1, and therefore i squared equals negative 1. As i cubed can be written as i squared times i, it is also equal to negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which equals negative i. i to the power of 4 can be expressed as i squared times i squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1, and therefore i to the 4 equals 1. This pattern repeats itself for increasing powers of x. Bearing this in mind, the expansion for e to the ix can be rewritten as 1 plus ix minus x squared on the second factorial minus ix cubed on the third factorial plus x to the power of 4 on the fourth factorial plus ix to the power of 5 on the fifth factorial. Separating and grouping real and imaginary components, e the expansion can be rewritten as 1 minus x squared on the second factorial plus x to the power of 4 on the 4th factorial, plus i times x, minus x cubed on the 3rd factorial, plus x to the power of 5 on the 5th factorial. It can be seen that all even powers of x are real components, and all odd powers of x are imaginary components. The next step is to consider a McLaren series expansion of cos x and sin x. First, let the function be equal to sine x. We know the first derivative of sine x is equal to cos x. The second, negative sine x. And the third, negative cos x. Using the unit circle and subbing in 0 for x, the following is proven true. When this is applied to the McLaren series, it is found that cos x can actually be expressed as x minus x cubed on the third factorial plus x to the power of 5 on the fifth factorial to infinity. Using this same logic, cos x can be expressed as 1 minus x squared on the second factorial plus x to the power of 4 on the fourth factorial. The final step is the information proven previously in order to show that Euler's identity holds. It was shown using the McLaren series expansion that e to the ix equals 1 minus x squared on the second factorial 
plus x to the power of 4 on the 4th factorial to infinity, holding this even powered pattern, plus i times x minus x cubed on the 3rd factorial to infinity, holding the odd powered pattern. It was also shown that cos x is equivalent to 1 minus x squared on the 2nd factorial, plus x to the power of 4 on the 4th factorial to infinity, holding the even powered pattern once again. Sin x was expanded using the Maclaurin series to equal x minus x cubed on the 3rd factorial plus x to the power of 5 on the 5th factorial to infinity, to infinity, once again holding the odd powered trend. E to the, therefore, putting this together, it can be seen that e to the i-axis in fact equals cos x plus i sin x. Letting x equals pi, it is shown that e to the i-x equals cos pi plus i sin pi. Referencing the unit circle, it is seen that cos pi equals negative 1 and sin pi equals 0, and therefore e to the i pi equals negative 1 plus i times 0, and therefore that e to the i is equivalent to negative 1. QED. By Reese Harms. And Curtis McLeod.